Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's see how easy it is to create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. We'll start with this multi-layered document that has a white background, a portrait, and a photograph of a Joshua tree with a flower. I've opened both photographs as smart objects so that if we need to make color or tonal adjustments or transform or scale the layers, we can do so non-destructively. Now to isolate the portrait from the background, I'll use the pen tool to draw a path around the portrait. While I could certainly use one of the many other selection tools in order to achieve maybe even a more accurate selection around the hair area, using the pen tool I can actually take artistic liberty or license and create a cleaner, simpler graphic shape that's going to be easier to read with the second image layered over the top of it. All right, in the Paths panel, I'll click on the Load Path as Selection icon, and at the bottom of the Layers panel, I'll click the mask icon to add a layer mask based on that selection, which will then reveal the white background below. On the Layers panel, I will target the Joshua tree and also make it visible, and then change the Blend Mode to Screen to achieve the double exposure effect. Then I'll select Edit, free transform, and I'm just going to scale the layer a little bit larger and also rotate it a bit as well. Now to convert the Joshua tree to black and white, as well as hide the sky that we can see within that portrait shape, I'll choose Layers, Smart Object, and then Edit Contents. I'll convert the image to black and white, increase the white slider to push the sky to pure white, and just decrease the overall exposure a bit. If I enable the clipping warning, we can see that increasing the whites in the sky also pushed some of the flower to pure white. So I'll select the mask, choose the brush, I'll enable auto mask, and then decrease the whites and increase the exposure a little bit and then just paint in the image over the flower in order to recover some of those highlights. All right, I'll toggle the clipping warning off and go ahead and apply those changes. Now, because I opened the Joshua Tree image into this document as a smart object, the edits that I've made will maintain the highest quality image possible. Now, to reveal more of the Joshua Tree's flower, I'm going to target the mask for the portrait layer, I'll tap B to select the brush tool, and I'll make sure that I'm painting with white, and then I'll paint to reveal both the flower as well as some of the spiky leaves of the Joshua tree. Now, if I reveal too much of the image, I can always swap my foreground and background colors by tapping the X key so that I'm painting with black in order to hide an area. Now to accentuate the eye, I'm going to select the portrait layer, and then I'll select the marquee tool. And I'm going to drag a large marquee around the eye, and then I'll select layer, new, and then new layer via copy. On the layers panel, I'll reposition this duplicated area of the layer to the top of the layer stack. Then to add a mask that hides the contents of the layer, I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and click the Add Layer Mask icon at the bottom of the Layers panel. I'll tap B to select the Brush tool, and I can use the left or right bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of the brushes needed. I'll tap 5 to select 50% opacity for the brush, and painting with white, I'll paint to reveal the eye area on the layer. Finally, to add a color overlay to the image, I'm going to target the layer, not the mask, and I'll set the foreground and background colors to their default swatches by tapping the D key. Then at the bottom of the Layers panel, I'll click the Adjustment Layer icon and choose Gradient Map. I'll click in the Gradient in the Properties panel in order to edit it. Then choose to add a color stop by clicking below the gradient. I'll click on the Color Swatch, and then select a hue, adjust the saturation, and set the brightness value to the same value as is the location. I'll go ahead and apply that. 
And there you go, a flexible, non-destructive way to create a double exposure effect in Photoshop. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.